Welcome back to the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and uh, we are in the bye weeks officially. Um, another crazy, tough bye week to get through again, I would say, this week um, with week six. And um, yeah, so week five, we had our first set of bye weeks. We had a lot of strong teams. Philly was on bye. Detroit was on by, so we lost some offensive firepower. This week, we're going to lose Minnesota, um, Miami, which Kansas City. normally would be a big deal, but it's not. Kansas City will be kind of a big deal for some people. Um, and there's one more. I, I always forget the fourth team on by, <laughs> um, by some chance. But, Joe, once again, I like to ask, how was your fantasy week? And we'll, we'll get into your team in a moment, and we can even segue into it. But how did your fantasy weekend go overall? And how'd you feel about the games? First of all, I believe the, uh, oh no, was the Chargers on by this past week? Yes. Okay. Yeah, That's that who the other team week. was. So first, let me say that uh, as an NFL fan, just a fan of football, it was a really fun Sunday of football. Uh, lots of scoring. Not so much on the ground. I don't know if you noticed, but running backs in general underproduced this week. There were only a couple of running backs that put up some decent points, uh, but through the air, uh, this is the best weekend of football we've had this season. And, and in addition to that, the, the passing game, uh, just crazy defense and special teams touchdowns were that were unbelievable, you know, yeah. a fumble recovery for a touchdown of 101 yards and an interception for a hundred yard touchdown return. And block kicks return for touchdowns. It was a crazy fun uh, football weekend. Yeah. Now, some teams benefited from all those points. I, for one, did not. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those points, especially in my other leagues, were left on the bench. Um, and so, you know, in my game, which we were going to lead off with, uh, I was going up against uh, Ian's ingenious team, and I thought I was catching him at a good week because Barkley was on uh, a bye. Uh, his uh, Chargers quarterback was on a bye. Mm -hmm. And so he was kind of scrambling to try and, and fill those positions where I really wasn't impacted by buys at all. And what happened? Ian led the league <laughs> in points with yeah. 182 points, which is the most points I think put up this season in one yeah. week. Mm -hmm. And so here I was thinking he was decimated by buys, but he picked up Flacco when he found out that Richardson had been ruled out. So that was another thought thing I thought I was going to benefit from, but you knew better. You, you <laughs> predicted that Flacco was going to come in and have a day, which he did. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got absolutely destroyed despite having my team full strength. Yeah. I, I have to say I have Joe Flacco biased. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time. I know it's kind of a goofy pick, but when the Lions were bad, when I was younger, one of the first teams that I was drawn to was the Ravens. Joe Flacco, in my younger days, led the Ravens to a Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP, one of the miracle playoff runs that we've seen in a long time. Um, so I just enjoyed Joe Flacco. He's kind of a, a goofy-looking guy, but he's a good quarterback. And what we saw from him last year with Cleveland and bring yeah. them to the playoffs and turn around their season kind of, just was like, he's got his mojo back. So when he uh, signed with the Colts and then immediately Anthony Richardson runs into injuries, I said, man, the Colts have just enough weapons on offense and their, their defense is no good. So their offense is going to be out there a lot. Joe Flacco is going to be able to thrive in this offense with the pieces that they have. And he's, he's done a serviceable job. So I wasn't too surprised by that. Um, I was surprised by Garrett Wilson. Now he got 22 targets in this game, which is absurd, and yeah. he only caught 12 or 13 balls. But Minnesota's defense has been so good. I thought they would do a little bit better, but I guess you know when you're you're trying to force feed a guy that's you know of talent that Garrett Wilson is, it's hard to shut him down the whole game. What's weird about that? It's like an anomaly because uh, Rodgers had a terrible game, turnovers and stuff. Yeah. As a matter of fact, their coach just got fired today. Um, their running game was non-existent. Um, Brees Hall just absolutely killed me in my leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, but Wilson, with 29.1 points, was just this 
the one shining spot in this game that was in London. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, for us, it was early in the morning. Um, it's shocking to see those kind of numbers because the rest of the team did nothing. Yeah. And the other thing too was, you know, he was, Ian was able to benefit off of, you know, being a smaller league, there's always going to play be players on the waiver wire. Yeah. So we went and picked up Kareem Hunt, who had a great game last night in the Monday night game. Got over 100 yards, a touchdown, a catch. Brock Bowers also catching at the right time because Devontae Adams was ruled out early because of his hamstring injury. I'm more so thinking because of his trade demands at the moment. Yeah. So they're trying to field trade. So even if he is a little banged up, they're going to sit him. So Brock Bowers kind of becomes the number one wide receiver as a tight end in a way in that offense. And um, Mike Evans, he's always due for a good game like that every once in a while. Yeah. Um, he's just a, a touchdown guy. And Jaden Reed's been super consistent. So yeah, it, as much as you think that you caught <laughs> Ian at the uh, a perfect time, he also had some luck on his side that, that worked in his favor. Well, speaking of Bowers, I mean, you know, we've talked on this podcast about this, the state of the tight end position and Bowers is starting to emerge as, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the elite tight ends that you, you should be able to start every week in, in yeah. points from. And as a rookie, you know, he's one of the best tight end prospects that we've seen in a long time. Um, he was the number one guy for Georgia um, for many years. And so it was only a matter of time that he'd figure it out. And he is a rookie, so he'll probably still have some ups and downs here and there, especially because the Raiders just aren't that good either. But I'm expecting him to have a pretty big season going forward unless when they trade Devonta Adams that they get a wide receiver in return. Yeah. Otherwise, he should be he could be possibly the number one guy going forward. Yeah. Um I do want to do the other <laughs> it's becoming a a segment every week, the Brees Hall update of how do you feel about Brees Hall? I know, you know, you use a, such a high draft pick on a guy um and you said you haven't been concerned um, I think it's a little bit just of their offense is just struggling in a way. But where are you at with Brees Hall? How do you feel about him? You still excited for him, thinking that he can turn things around? You know, I, I don't – I can't bench him. I You know, there's nobody right. on my bench that I would start in his place. And like you said, because he was my first pick of the draft, I feel obligated to play him. If If someone – was confident and wanted to trade for him, I would definitely be open to trades. But the Brees Hall situation is very similar to my Ayuk situation. So Ayuk was, I believe, the first wide receiver I took in the draft. Yeah. And I stuck with him for four weeks where he couldn't produce double digits. He was giving me single digits week after week after week. And I got so frustrated I benched him in, in our ONTV league. I traded him in another league. And what does he do? He blows up. Yeah. He has a monster game when I finally said enough is enough. And I, I kind of joke that certain players just don't want to play on certain teams. <laughs> and I just don't think I who likes the situation. I think he's pulling a Devonte Adams on me where he wants out. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, maybe Brees is doing the same thing. Maybe he'll play better on someone else's team, but yeah. Um, it, it, it's frustrating that two of the biggest disappointments in fantasy this season are on my roster, Brees Hall and Ayuk, yeah. at least until Ayuk, you know, turn things around this week. Yeah. Uh, so Ayuk may find himself back in my starting lineup and Brees just is going to sit there unless somebody makes an offer for him. The, the thing that I I'm seeing right now too, and maybe one, maybe I'm that guy that might offer for him, but I don't know. I kind of like where my team's at at the same time. Um, the one thing that I'll say is this week is going to be a big week for Brees Hall. He's playing Buffalo, who's the worst team against the run. Um, so he ha could have big production. The downside is that, you know, back-to-back -back weeks, Denver and Minnesota are some of the better run defenses, and he struggled. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to get Buffalo, but then he goes back and they play Pittsburgh, who's a good defense. New England, they're okay. Houston, a good, de uh, good run defense. And then his schedule gets easier. So he might be one of those players that if you just hold on to, he might be able to break free. But if he struggles against Buffalo or the Jets struggle against Buffalo, then I would maybe start raising some alarms. But well, obviously the Jets are in turmoil right now. And, and 
you know, Brees Hall is not going to have success if their offense can't stay on the field. Right. And how many turnovers did Rodgers have? Three picks. Three, three turnovers. Yeah. That doesn't help anybody on that offensive uh, side of the ball. And so I don't know what their options are. I don't, like I said, they fired the coach. I don't know if they're going to bench Rodgers. I mean, you you see him in the post-game pressers where he's just so down on himself. And he's mm-hmm. like, I'm making terrible throws. Yeah. But who do they fire the coach? Right. So, and, he's, and he's not 100%. He keeps getting banged up in these games. And, yeah. you know, he's, he's 40 years old. So. so Hall is not in a good situation right now because the offense can't stay on the field. So. I don't know. I don't know what to do. But overall, in in uh, week five, uh, running backs across the board were down. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in my other league, the three running back starters that I started, one in flex, none of them cracked ten points. All of them were in the six seven point range, and, yeah. and that was that was across the entire <laughs> league. You know, only like Derrick Henry and those guys are are putting up those kind of points. But yeah, I do want to pull point out on my team that the one guy who's been blowing me away is Kyron Williams. Mm -hmm. Uh, He has touchdowns in every game. And if you go back to last regular season, I think he ended the season with maybe two or three touchdowns on the end of the season. So he's, he's scored, I think like in eight straight games, he scored a touchdown. He's been absolutely remarkable. And I think he's been my biggest surprise because he was my preseason stay away. Um, mm-hmm. I just felt like the Rams weren't going to be a good offense and they're, they're really not. Um, and part of that is due to injury. Yeah. But Kyron even still has been consistent somehow, even though their passing offense is basically non-existent. Yeah. You would think teams would be stacking the box, just stopping Kyron Williams, but they've figured out ways to give him touches and give him important spots. And it just, it it's working and I don't, I don't get it, but it's working and I wouldn't worry about it at this point. I sure hope Cooper Cup comes back sooner than later because I think, you know, him and Puka are, if they somehow return to this team sooner rather than later, I think Rams can turn things around because now they got the running game. They'll have the passing game. Uh, You know, Stafford's been turning over the ball, which is kind of tough to see, but, (laughs) um, but yeah, uh, my heroes on my side uh, are Kyron Williams uh, Diggs has been very, very consistent every week. He's given me double digit points last yep. week. He scored a touchdown and he um, might get a boost because Nico Collins is, uh, ailing at the moment. Yeah. We don't know the extent of his injury, but yeah, he might see more of a workload. And I also yeah. need to salute, uh, Jake Ferguson, uh, Dallas tight end. You know, he missed the, what the uh, game or two early on in the season, Um, when he came back, he's been consistently putting up double digit points every week. He's getting the targets, he's getting the catches. Mm -hmm. And I got to say next week, well, they're going to be facing the lions and you know, the lions tend to get into shootouts with people. So, um, those have been very, very consistent for me. And I need to pat myself on the back. Leading my squad this week was a waiver wire pickup, uh, Chuba Hubbard with Carolina, Mm-hmm. Uh, he scored 17.5, uh, on my squad to lead the way. And, uh, I have him in the flex spot and he's, he's been very, very solid. He had a really impressive touchdown run on Sunday. So those are kind of the heroes. Um, looks like I may have lost my kicker. Uh, the San Francisco kicker Moody, mm-hmm. uh, got hurt on a tackle Yeah, and, uh, I don't know how long his injury is going to last. So I'm going to have to hit the waiver wire to find a replacement, yeah. uh, kicker. Uh, again, the only real points I left on the bench was Ayuk. I, I gave up on him. I benched him and he scored over 22 points. Yeah. Uh, so fr- frustrating for me. Well, the, the lucky uh, thing is that it wouldn't have mattered. That's, yeah, you're you're absolutely you know. right about that. Yeah, and I I was due. I mean, four four wins to start the season. I, yeah. I was due. It's a good start. Um, <laughs> and I gotta say, the trash shot going back and forth between Ian and I was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, his his team has really turned it up after you know kind of struggling early on. He's had some some big blow up weeks lately. So another team to watch out for, of course, in this league, which is just crazy. Um, moving on to the next matchup, we had Tracy taking on Malik. Uh, Malik really close to his namesake. He is in fifth at the moment, unfortunately, not sixth. <laughs> um, but he gets closer and closer each and every week. Um, Tracy putting up 181.78, so right behind Ian in the top scores this week. Um, and I think that's a big thing that I noticed in a, in a lot of our leagues is that 
like the point disparity between the upper echelon teams and the teams that did really bad is massive. It just seems like some teams blew up like crazy and then other teams could not do anything. Well, she, you know, she's a perfect example of why I like the quarterback wide receiver hookup. Mm -hmm. Uh, She started both Burrow and Chase, who, even though they lost the game in an exciting game against Baltimore, uh, those two combined scored 75 points. Yeah. Just those two players. That's hard to beat. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, if, if, Chase is uh, excelling, then Burrow has something to do with that. So um, starting those two players and, and having them play the way they did, uh, that it's, that's hard to beat. And, you know, Malik put up 144 points, which is pretty respectable in mm-hmm. this league, but he just couldn't even come close to that. Yeah, Malik being the third highest scorer of the week and unfortunately oh. had to take a loss. Yeah, that's um, brutal when that happens. So it's it's tough to see, but it would have been fun because, you know, Malik has Lamar Jackson on the other side of that matchup. So watching uh, that whole matchup was important for this matchup in fantasy in general. Um, to see those two quarterbacks going back and forth had to have been fun. And they both put up similar numbers, yeah, 33 yeah. points. Um, the only sad part is that Malik had to go against Jamar Chase as well, who was just incredible in that game. Um, now the one sad thing for Malik was he did lose Nico Collins to an injury. Like I said, we don't know the extent of it yet, but he did get his touchdown in. He only had two catches and he had 15 points in those two catches. So Mm. just shows you how good he has been on the season. Um, Travis Etienne found out later that he was still dealing with that shoulder injury that he dealt with last week. Um, so that might be something to watch out for going forward. So they've been kind of limiting his touches. And then George Kittle had a really big game. Um, now that he's kind of been back to being healthy, he got another touchdown in this game. He had eight catches for 64 yards. Um, Justin Jefferson was a pedestrian for Tracy, I hate to say, at 15 <laughs> points. Um, Again, it was that London game, so you know yeah. I, I didn't want to rely too heavily on anyone in that London game, but mm-hmm. uh, he was one of the shining uh, spots on that team. Darnold had his worst game of the season. He yep. was he was miserable, and I don't know if it's the Jets' defense or the the London lag or whatever you want to call it. But uh, uh, yeah, Darnold had a, a, a terrible performance. Yeah. The other disappointing thing I would say for Malik is that when Lamar Jackson was throwing, he was mostly throwing it to Zay Flowers, and who had Zay Flowers? But Tracy. Yeah. Uh, so she got all all of that value out of Zay Flowers. He had 111 yards on seven catches because all of a sudden Baltimore was chasing points and they had to make a comeback, so they had to throw the ball a lot, which they don't do a ton. And so we saw Zay Flowers get a lot more involved. That's one of the frustrating things about fantasy football. In the other league that we're in, the ESPN League, I started Kirk Cousins, who was the top quarterback for the week. Yeah, But my opponent had Moody. Mm-hmm. And so they almost canceled each other out because yeah. Moody had two touchdowns in a monster game. And mm-hmm. so they kind of negated each other. Luckily, I was able to come away with a win in that league. But, yeah, it's frustrating when your quarterback just keeps targeting your opponent's receiver. It's yeah. so frustrating. Yeah. Uh, luckily, in this one, nobody left anything on the bench um, of value. Tracy's bench had a, a solid outing, I would say. But, you know, she's she put up all those points, too, without – She's been without Mixon. Looks like Rasheed Rice is going to be out for the season. Yeah. Um, as far as updates go, we don't know the full extent, but that's just more of what it's looking for or looking at. And, um, yeah, so, again, Tracy's team, it's going to be scary. Nice thing is, moving into this week, when we look at the previews, Justin Jefferson will be on bye, so whoever's facing Tracy, maybe get a little bit of relief. <laughs> I will say this, and if Tracy's listening, somehow you're going to have to – get your uh, Washington running back Robinson into your starting lineup. It's Washington's just on fire. Yeah. And if you can have a piece of that, if you can somehow tap into that momentum, mm-hmm. any Washington player is going to help you. I mean, you look on the other side of the ball, uh, McLaurin had a decent game with 13 points and I noticed uh, a pass. So the week before when Washington, who did Washington play the week before Tampa Bay? Was it? I think, um, let me pull it up. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. It was Tampa Bay. Cause it was the game you and I had uh, a stake in. Remember that it was Arizona. They played last week. Was it? And then, Oh, was it? And then, um, 
What's the Washington quarterback? Uh, Jaden Daniels. Daniels. Do you remember he threw that touchdown into the end zone that McLaurin caught yeah. in the corner? He threw the exact same pass this past Sunday mm-hmm. that was caught in the end zone for a touchdown. And I'm like, these guys are fun to watch. Yeah. Who well, would have predicted that? And just wait. This week they're playing Baltimore. Mm. So we're going to see so another Lam- Lamar Jackson and Jaden Daniels going at it, <laughs> which – Jaden Daniels has been the closest thing that we've seen to Lamar Jackson since Lamar Jackson's rookie season. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that can be a really fun game once again between those two teams. So, yeah, Tracy, get Robinson into your starting lineup. The team's <laughs> just too much fun to have him sitting on your bench. Yeah. She will have – I mean, I don't know if it's a controversy, um, but with Atlanta throwing the ball so much, I know that Kyle Pitts' numbers will be inflated. Yeah. Um, but they have an easy matchup against Carolina and Sam Laporta's coming off by, I don't know. Sam Laporta hasn't been used as much as we would like him to be for the yeah. lions, but it's so hard to bench him. Like, I don't know. To me, that might be a little bit of a, a tough call this week for her. Yeah. You know, prior to the season, I was really high on the Falcons. And, uh, I remember a week or so into the season when we did the podcast, you you would ask me like, you know, what are your takes on the season? I'm saying, I'm just really disappointed in cousins and, and the Falcons. Now things seem to be turning around over yeah, there and, starting to get things going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So, you know, again, if Pitts might take advantage of the heat that the Falcons have right now, but, uh, the lions are kind of in the same boat. The lions yeah. have been playing really well to the point where they're, they're running trick plays and scoring <laughs> off trick plays. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a dilemma. And um, you know this week they're really wanting that revenge on the Cowboys. The Cowboys so it yeah. could be a really fun matchup. That's gonna is that a primetime game? No, no I don't, it's I don't think so. Okay. I, it might even just be let me try to look it up. I it, I think it's just a one o'clock game or wow. is it four? That's gonna be fun. Oh man. no, it's a late game, so it's yeah. four twenty five. So it's In probably Dallas. gonna be like Fox's game of the week, I would assume. Something like that. Um but yeah, it's in Dallas. So that that will be a fun matchup. Yeah. Um, going on to our next fantasy matchup, we had Marie taking on Sammy and the Green Buckeyes. And uh, Kelsey later, finally getting some production out of Kelsey. She scored 137 points. Sammy, unfortunately, 0-5. 112 points. Was that the lowest of the week? <laughs> um, yes, it was, unfortunately. Starting to feel bad for the guy. He was... Uh, a Chan left the game uh, yeah. after scoring just two points. Mm-hmm. That really hurt. Um, he's just, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, Sammy wouldn't have any luck at all. He's yeah. just really getting hurt, and uh, well, he tries so hard to better his team every week. But. Yeah, well, I keep coming back to it, but one of I think his little draft draft day mistakes is just not getting many wide receivers. Yeah. So he's got Xavier Worthy, Rashid Shahid that he had to start. Shahid's had a good season overall, but he's still not one of those like dominant guys that you can expect to maybe carry you this um in the season. Yeah. Xavier Worthy, he's still a rookie. They're still incorporating him into the Chiefs offense, but he's not their number one guy. He's not their number two guy. Maybe he's their number three, four guy. Yeah, touchdown so, saved his uh, saved his day. Yeah, and that's kind of what he's been in, been doing most of the season is touchdowns. And then Jordan Mason finally had a pedestrian game for San Francisco. Yeah. He lost a fumble, didn't get into the end zone finally. And then yeah, for the uh, you know for the the parlays and stuff like on DraftKings, everybody was saying Mason with a touchdown. Mm-hmm. That's a sure bet, and he did not find the end zone yeah a lot of people thought San Francisco was going to take care of business against Arizona and they just there was some thought that people were thinking maybe they were playing safe because they have the Thursday night game this week yeah that maybe they took things too easy trying to rest guys and keep guys on a lower snap count so that they could be fully healthy going into the Seattle game this week and maybe they overplayed their hand and they got beat yeah I mean, people were so high, I mean, uh, because they were facing a, 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 you know, giving defense. Uh, I made a a parlay bet that Purdy was going to throw three touchdowns and 300 yards. uh, And no, that did not happen. Luckily, I didn't, you know, that was like a really small bet. But yeah, yeah, Niners uh, were disappointing. And and, uh, Mason was right up there. I thought he was going to score a touchdown and he didn't. Yeah. And then 
Dalton Kincaid's been really disappointing. I think a lot of people thought he might be what Brock Bowers has been for Las Vegas, basically being the number one receiver as a tight end for Buffalo. But, you know, the last two weeks, Buffalo's really struggled and they haven't looked as good necessarily. And Josh Allen kind of got beat up in this game. Houston looked pretty good. And it was just kind of a messy game because even though C.J. Stroud had a good passing game, he only had one touchdown. And, you know, he didn't throw the ball away, but that only resulted in 16 points for Sammy. So didn't get a big game out of C.J. Stroud either. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just it's more of the same for Sammy. He's just not getting full production out of guys. Now, at least this week, he should get A.J. Brown back. That should be a big boost to his team. We'll see if Jonathan Taylor gets healthy because that's another, you know, a big piece for Sammy's team. Um, Nick Robert, Chubb maybe is getting closer. He's back at practice. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but he was, uh, Sammy was hurt by uh, the Philly by a week. Mm -hmm. Goddard, who's been, you know, unstoppable the past few weeks, I would imagine he's going to end up back in Sammy's starting lineup because he's he's been on a tear. Yeah, the only nervy thing is that, Goddard has been really good without Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Right. And both of those guys are expected back. So yeah. hard to say, but maybe just in general, Philly will be fired up having their, their full team back that, you know, every might everybody might get involved. But it might get a little messy at the same time. Yeah. On the other side, Patrick Mahomes for Marie. He's kind of just been that guy. She's going through what I went through last <laughs> season where yeah. You draft him, you know, he's probably the first quarterback off the, the draft board, and um, he's just not producing. Mm -hmm. uh, on the field, they're undefeated. Yeah. In fantasy, he's not doing much at all. Yeah, they're just kind of – they're winning <coughs> They're winning games kind of ugly, and, you know, he did have a lot of yardage in this game. He had 331 yards, which kind of saved his night. Had a couple rushing yards, but he threw another pick. He keeps throwing picks, not really getting touchdown production. Um. The other crazy thing, too, is CeeDee Lamb didn't have a great game. He had a down game. DK Metcalf had a down game. He fumbled again, which is back-to-back -back games. Mm. Um, but And he played the Giants. I think a lot of people also think Seattle did the same thing that San Francisco did, and they tried to play it too safe, maybe, thinking that they had an easy matchup, and they also are playing on Thursday night mm. against San Francisco. So maybe both of those teams got a little bit too cocky trying to save some guys and ended up losing those matchups. Um, but Marie got another good game out of Derrick Henry. Not maybe as big as we thought it would be after Cincinnati has been a terrible, terrible defense. DeAndre Swift continues to blow up as Chicago's offense all of a sudden is figuring things out. That's only been the past couple of weeks. I mean, yeah. people were really down on Swift saying, you know, is he startable? And right. now all of a sudden he gives you two big back-to-back -back games, and yep. he's he's the guy. Right. All of a sudden, Chicago's figuring things out, and now this week they're going to go in against Jacksonville. Ne yes, they have to go to London, which is unfortunate for them, but Jacksonville's defense, once again, is terrible. So Chicago should have a, an easy time moving the ball. Like I said, Travis Kelsey, he's doing great without Rasheed Rice there. He's been the go-to guy for Kansas City. And then Amari Cooper... Get him out of Cleveland, please. He, he does not deserve to be playing with Deshaun Watson. He deserves did you, better. Did you see what happened with Watson walking off the field? Yeah. Uh, that's inexcusable, and I don't know how he gets the start yeah. this weekend. Uh, he, they were like, no, we, we want to go for it or whatever, yeah. and and they didn't want to call a timeout, so he's walking off the field. The announcers are like, are they calling a timeout? And he walked off the field. And I'm like, you'd be done. You should yeah. be done. And Cooper's suffering. I mean, Cooper's yeah. had a couple of up games, mm -hmm. but he's suffering from that quarterback. He needs to get out of there. Yeah. He needs to be done. I mean, yeah, they gave him a lot of money, but did you, are you that stubborn where you're going to say, we paid for him, we're keeping him in? He's, right. he's been just awful. Yeah. And I think the other problem is now that Cleveland – Cleveland doesn't have Joe Flacco, so they don't have a great backup quarterback at the moment, so maybe maybe that's part of it. But, yeah, once again, this is a playoff-caliber talented team, especially if they get Nick Chubb back and he looks, you know, relatively healthy. Yeah. Then they could make another playoff push, but in the current state of this, this team, they're awful. Yeah. And Amari Cooper's name is starting to get swirled into trade rumors. Yeah. I would love to see Amari Cooper 
<laughs> go somewhere else that he can produce. He he would elevate any team that he yeah. went to uh, because they would be happy to have him and, and right. he would be part of that offense. In Cleveland, you, you, the quarterback is the guy throwing you the ball yeah. and he's they got to make a change in Cleveland. Imagine, they have to. Uh, this is one of the names. People are throwing this team out for a lot of trade situations, but imagine if Mamari Cooper went to the Chiefs. Oh, my God. Wow. Like, yeah. That would be fun. They might be a Super Bowl caliber team. They might. They might. Um, then Michael Pittman, he's been relishing in the quality quarterback upgrade with Joe Flacco. Anthony Richardson, supposedly still their starter, though. When he's healthy, he might be healthy this week. So we'll see what Pittman does. And then I would say Marie's MVP has been Young Way Koo. He's wow. just been one of the most consistent kickers behind Brandon Aubrey this year. Yeah, you know, in the other league that uh, that we're in that has huge bonuses for kickers, I was looking at the top 10 points producers out of all the skill positions, and three of those top 10 positions were kickers again. Yeah, Kickers continue to dominate, uh, you know, in these games that we're watching, like on the red zone or in prime time, uh, 50-yard field goals are a gimme for the most mm -hmm. part. I mean, there's yeah. been a couple of misses, but – uh, more often than not, they're just relying on their kicker to kick 50-plus yarders over yeah. and over and over again, and uh, the kickers just keep putting up these huge numbers. Yeah, I think it makes it fun for fantasy that you're seeing production out of kickers for once because, you know, there's a lot of leagues that don't use kickers anymore because they just don't think that it's worth it. Yeah. Um, but right now, this year, we're seeing, you know, kickers are <laughs> they're making a difference, surprisingly. They they're game winners. Yeah. Um, again, luckily nobody really left anything on the bench necessarily that would have, yeah. would have mattered. So that's always good to see. Um, and then the final matchup, unfortunately that would be me. <laughs> uh, the lucky part is that I did win the matchup, but just barely 121 to 115 over Becky and talking to Becky this morning, she is starting to get a little bit concerned about her team as she falls to one in four. Oof. So she's really not that far behind Sammy at the moment. She's kind of been on a, a struggle spree right now. And I think a lot of that is in part to Arizona. We said she has a lot of Arizona players. Marvin Harrison Jr. has been vastly disappointing for anybody that's drafted him as a rookie. He's one of the top prospects we've seen in a long time. And he's just, he's not working out at the moment. And I don't well, know. He, it's... he had some big games early on, you know, he had like a multiple touchdown game early on and yeah. people were throwing out, you know, rookie of the year. Uh, but he's cooled off quite a bit since then. Yeah. And he's been saved by touchdowns in a couple, a couple matchups, but Arizona's just kind of struggling and they're not playing as well as people thought. Now they did beat San Francisco, so they're doing something right. Uh, but it's just, again, it's, it's almost like Kansas city. Like when Arizona is winning, it's a little bit ugly. Uh, James Conner has probably been their most consistent guy for them, and he's been producing pretty well. Then uh, Deontay Johnson for Becky struggled in this game. Kind of a weird one that Carolina just couldn't do anything against Chicago, and I know Chicago's defense is really good, but the way that Carolina had played the last couple weeks, I thought they would have gotten a little bit more out of him, especially, you know, he's had 26 and then 21 points last week. He's been on a tear lately mm -hmm. and uh, only getting three catches for 23 yards was very disappointing. George Pickens struggling once again. And then Drake London being able to profit off of Kirk Cousins, huge game. Yeah. So going into like after Thursday night football, I was, I was nervous. Becky immediately put up 33 points from her first player. That's never a good thing for me to see, but I was kind of able to claw back Josh Allen. Like I said, he had a, Pretty pedestrian game. He got 54 rushing yards, which I think saved him, only giving me 15 points. Brian Thomas Jr., he continues to be a bright spot for Jacksonville. Yeah. And um, I picked up the the hot waiver wire ad of Dontavian Wicks, and uh, you, as you can see, he got me four points. <laughs> so He was another one like that the, the pundits, the experts were really high on, and Get him into your starting lineup this week because Love is playing really, really well, and they had you know a good uh, matchup defensively, and uh, he was absent. He yeah. did a whole lot of nothing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, BJ Bijan Robinson, he's, he's right up there with Brees Hall. He is. Like, he's, he's right there. He's he's getting slightly more production, but you would have thought in the offensive game that. Atlanta had and the amount of throwing that they did that he would have had more dump offs and yeah. 
He didn't. He had three catches for 16 yards, equated to 10, 10 fantasy points. And right now that's, what is that, two weeks, three weeks in a row? Three weeks in a row, basically, where he hasn't really done anything. Even just all season, he's just not, you know, when again, he was my top pick overall, and he's just, he's not producing to the level that I expected. Um, so that's been, it's been really tough, and it, it's put me in a, in a tough situation. Hopefully he'll benefit from, you know, this passing game really going off. Yeah. And uh, if defenses are going to have to respect the passing game, then he might benefit from that. So right. I wouldn't give up on him just yet. No, and and it's kind of similar, like you said, with Brees Hall. is like you can't, you can't really bench him. You just kind of have to go with it and just hope that they start to figure it out. It's just a little disappointing. Aaron Jones, man, he has been a great waiver wire pickup since I got him. But uh, he went out early in this game with a hip injury, so that's a little scary going forward. Luckily, I'm getting a lot of guys back from bye weeks, so I should be able to replace him if he's not good to go. Um, I picked up David Njoku because Mark Andrews had been terrible, and I got <laughs> two points out of my tight end. Well, that's been better than Mark Andrews' zero that he's Yeah, been but getting. Mark Andrews did end up scoring more points than that this week, so that was... That was a little tough. That's the way it goes. Uh, I did benefit from T. Higgins. Uh, Joe Burrow having that big game. He threw two touchdowns wow. to T. Higgins. So nine catches, 83 yards, two touchdowns. Give me 29 points. That was a, a huge game for me that really kind of solidified my win this week. Yeah, I picked right. up Antonio Gibson because he was ruled the starter over Ramondre Stevenson, who had been having a fumbling issue. And Antonio Gibson played a couple snaps to start the game, and then Ramondre Stevenson ran in a touchdown early and never looked back again. He got a starting job right back. I saw a funny uh, animated GIF uh, somewhere where it was like a SpongeBob, SpongeBob GIF where someone gets thrown into prison. I don't know which character it was, but they had Ramondre, Ramondre Stevenson in the little jail cell. And they said, okay, you're, you're going into this jail cell to be punished for your transgressions. And then, like, two seconds later, they're like, okay, you're free to go. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to Stevenson. Yeah. Like, you thought he was going to be punished for his fumbling issues, and then uh, all of a sudden, he maybe it was just the motivation he needed to have yeah. a big game. I don't know. Yep. And then I got a good production out of my Denver defense that was a, a waiver wire pickup, did my the streaming defense, and they got a touchdown, three picks, three sacks, gave, them, yeah. gave me 16 points, which was actually pretty big in this matchup since it was so close for so long. Las Vegas is, I think, one of those offenses where week to week, you know, if you like streaming defenses, you go, who's playing Las Vegas yeah. this week? Because they have not been good. Yeah. Uh, once again, this matchup didn't really matter for the benches. I'm starting to maybe debate about playing Jaden Daniels over Josh Allen, but that's... You've got yourself in a quarterback dilemma, my friend. <sighs> yeah, Allen it's, it's one of those things Daniels. that's really tough to do uh, to start a rookie over... Josh Allen, even though Jaden Daniels has been impressive, I, I've loved watching him. He was my favorite player coming into the fantasy season, and I, I wanted to try to get him on all my teams, and I did get him in two of the three leagues. But sitting Josh Allen is so, is so tough. It's so tough. It'll it'll be interesting to see. Luckily, I'm going to get. Uh, hopefully, Malik Neighbors comes back this week. Jameer Gibbs coming off a bye. Devontae Smith should be healthy. Like you said about your other leagues, Cooper Cup. Hope hopefully getting healthy in the coming weeks. So my team should be getting back to full strength. This week was a scary one. So I'm glad that I snuck away with the win because I really needed it this week. Speaking of uh, Malik Neighbors, uh, that Giants offense is, is another one to keep an eye on. Yeah. They, after a rough week one, uh, they're, they're, they got some momentum. They got mm -hmm. some heat, just like, you know, Washington and, and Atlanta. They're, they're putting up some points. Wondell Robinson has been playing really well, getting a lot of targets. And uh, neighbors, when he's back on the field, that that offense is scary. Yeah, uh, let's look ahead to some waiver wires this week. Um, with the bye weeks, like we said, this is where you'll probably start hitting the waiver wire a lot more often. If you need a quarterback, if you have a Sam Darnold or who did we say earlier that's on bye as well, um, uh, uh Mahomes. Oh, Mahomes, yeah. which. I mean, maybe you should be replacing him anyway. <laughs> but we got Justin Fields playing Las Vegas. Like we just said, Las Vegas might just be a matchup you just take advantage of. So Justin Fields might be an option, although there, there is some talk that Russell Wilson might get the start. Uh, 
Cousins. Your guy Kirk Cousins is out there. He's you playing know, Carolina I, this week. I think I drafted him and may have dropped him <laughs> at some point. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I might put some thought into putting him back on the blockbuster squad. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Baker Mayfield going up against New Orleans. That might be a tough matchup. Caleb Williams going up against Jacksonville. Now, again, they are the London game, so that's that's a little bit scary because of jet lag, but Jacksonville's defense is horrific, so you might be able to get something there. And then Daniel Jones playing the Sunday night game against Cincinnati. We've seen Cincinnati's defense not be able to stop anyone, and as you also just mentioned, the Giants, their offenses, they're starting to click a little bit. Their offensive line has played better. They're going to get Malik Neighbors back. I'm not sure about Devin Singletary or not, but their rookie Tyrone Tracy has played really good in his absence. So obviously, like always, tons of quarterback options. And uh, let's filter over to the wide receivers and running backs. If you want a hookup, an easy hookup, Wandale Robinson is right there. I love that guy. He's been playing really good, gets a lot of targets. He even He even got a touchdown this week, which, you know, really isn't part of his game necessarily. He's more of a volume guy. Yeah. But... They found him the end zone a couple times, and he's getting consistent targets. So that's an option to go for. Tony Pollard going up against the Colts if you need a running back. The Colts have been decimated in the ground game. They just can't stop running backs. So that might be a matchup to take care of, uh, take advantage of. Darnell Mooney, like we just saw, he's Man. playing Carolina. And the way that the Falcons are winning, they're just passing the ball a lot. So even though he's not the number one guy for Kirk Cousins, he's been getting tons of looks. And he think might about, be good pickup. Think about that. Cousins and Mooney, both on the waiver wire. If Sammy wants to possibly make some major improvements to his team, yeah. imagine picking both of those up against Carolina and put him in, in your starting lineup immediately. Yeah. It's, I know he I know he likes CJ Stroud and it's hard to get away from the guy that you drafted. And that he stole from you. But they're going up against New England this week. So that might be one of those games where, you know, Houston gets up early. They don't have Nico Collins. Maybe they're just able to cruise to a victory, and they don't. They don't have to throw too much. It's, yeah. it's hard to say. It's risky, but you know that might just be the way that it goes. Um, other than that, you have any other waiver guys that that you can see that you're looking at? Um, no, you know a lot. A lot of them are finding their way onto rosters. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a rookie. Uh, Leggett, is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah. Carolina. I know some people are high on him. I see a red uh, questionable tag next to him. Yeah, but. he got banged up in that game, and I, I'm not sure about his status at the moment. But the, And the other problem, I think, this week, for other guys that I would think of, like Jacoby Myers, Las Vegas receiver. Now that Devontae Adams is out, he's kind of the number one guy. But they're going up against Pittsburgh this week. That's a tough matchup. Lad McConkey. He's become kind of the number one receiver for the Chargers, but they're going up against Denver, who's really good against wide receivers. So that's another tough one. Yeah. Alan Lazard, who's been kind of Aaron Rodgers' go to guy outside of Garrett Wilson. They're going up against Buffalo, who's got a good pass defense. That's a tough, tough matchup as well. Yeah. Austin Eckler going up against Baltimore. If that's a shootout, maybe Eckler gets a lot of catches in the backfield. So that that could be a little sneaky option that you could go for. Here's one name that jumps out at me because we were talking about him you and i uh at the end of last week i think is uh slayton with the giants yeah um i was looking to pick someone up in another league and you said what about slayton and i said well i already have wandale robinson i wouldn't start both of them mm-hmm. and who had the bigger game this past weekend slayton had yeah. a monster game right and so there he is sitting on the waiver wire right yeah now. the the only tricky thing with that and i i think it's a good Good idea, but the, the one tricky thing is if Malik Neighbors does come back, he yeah. kind of takes that role back. Um, but speculatively, Darius Slayton could be another name that we see on the trade market as a guy that the Giants want to move on from. So he could yeah. also become a guy that gets into a better situation. So if you want to make a speculative speculative ad, Slayton might be a guy. Or if Malik N- Neighbors doesn't clear concussion protocol once again, there's a chance he could get more play time. So yeah. It is something to watch out for. You know, it's almost kind of frustrating with just being an eight-team league because I'm seeing Cousins on the waiver wire. I'm seeing Daniel Jones on the waiver wire. They're both very tempting, but my quarterbacks are pretty, and I have Sam Darnold on my roster. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to drop either one of those for these two guys, so it's it's like an embarrassment of riches that yeah. there's a lot of quarterbacks that are playing pretty well right now. Right. Um, there's good tight end options as well. Tyler Conklin's been getting more involvement for new, uh, the Jets. 
Pat Fryermuth for Pittsburgh, he's starting to get a little more acclimated. And I would think if Russell Wilson starts, he might get even more. Mark Andrews is still out there if anybody wants him. I do you, not. You just glanced right well, by. The, I was going to the... go to him last. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and the number one tight end, if you need a tight end, is Tucker Craft. And if you want him, you'll have to take my waiver priority because he's my number one waiver priority. There's no hiding about it because if anybody needs a tight end, I'm sure they're going after him. So if anybody wants a tight end and they want to take him away from me, go for it. I have other options. But he would be my number one waiver claim in the this uh, week. The other league that we're in, uh, I have Ferguson as my tight end. I trust him. I leave him in there. But I started thinking about, you know, bye weeks or maybe an injury or whatever. I'm like, I need a backup tight end in that league. And I grabbed Kraft last week. Yeah, I'm not too happy about that. And he's on my bench right now. And now I have a tight end dilemma. He was going to be the guy that I would have, I was going to drop <sighs> Andrews for in that league. Mm. And same thing that you did all of a sudden, um, Right after waivers ran, I started looking at guys, and I was like, man, maybe I should make a couple changes. I had a big watch list of guys. I had like four or five guys that I was like, okay, maybe I can pick these guys up and make some moves. Within the day, throughout the day, each one would disappear. And I just, <laughs> by the end of the day, I was like, oh, maybe I should pick up Josh Downs. Oh, somebody picked him up in the last <laughs> 10 minutes. Unfortunate. I'm going to go after Tucker Craft. Oh, yep. Joe picked him up like 20 <laughs> minutes before. So that was pretty frustrating, but yeah, yeah. Tucker Craft has been incredible for Green Bay now that Jordan Love's been back. So again, uh, if you need a tight end, he's pretty reliable. People are pretty high on him right now, saying that he may finish right up there as far as tight ends go. So, yeah. like I said, I have a tight end dilemma in that league. Uh, you know, Ferguson is is facing the Lions this week, so I got to leave him in at least one more week. But if if Craft outscores him uh, in week six, then I may end up benching Ferguson that league and starting craft. He's, he's an exciting player to watch. Yeah. If you enjoy streaming defenses, like Joe and I have started to do more often, there is plenty of good options. Philadelphia going up against those terrible Cleveland Browns. Like I keep saying, they give up a lot of sacks. Their offensive line is banged up. Deshaun Watson doesn't know what he's doing. So that might be a good matchup, even though Philly's defense hasn't been as good as we maybe thought they would be. Houston going up against New England, they might be switching to their rookie quarterback and they're just their offense is just very meh. So that might be a good option. Los Angeles going up against Denver. Denver's been winning a lot of games with their defense, but you know, they've gotten decent play out of Bo Nix, their rookie quarterback. So another option there. And then hmm. If Anthony Richardson starts a speculative stream could be the Tennessee defense because Anthony Richardson when healthy has not looked very good <laughs> yeah he's been prone to making mistakes so that's that's another possibility but yeah that's when I've been eyeballing but you know I gotta say I I have San Francisco's defense in our ON TV league and uh I have no desire to swap them out with anybody they've been playing really really well yeah so those are waiver wire ads and um let's look towards week six to the matchups and find out who the highest projected team is at the moment. Oh, look, it's me. <laughs> and now again, this always happens that maybe not everybody set their actual lineup yet. Like right now, Ian has Joe Flacco still in. Not sure if he's going to get the start or not because Anthony Richardson is still questionable right now, but that's a big zero for him. Kareem Hunt's going to be on bye, So he's got to make some adjustments to his team. Once again, he's going to have a, a little bit of a quarterback dilemma, perhaps, because if Anthony Richardson is back and healthy, do you play Anthony Richardson against Tennessee or do you play Justin Herbert against Denver? Both those defenses are pretty good. Yeah. So kind of a tough matchup. I'm sure Amon Ross St. Brown is going to go back up into his lineup. So that's going to be tough. I have him in my ESPN league. So that's always one of those difficult situations. Saquon Barkley going, going up against Cleveland. That should be a good one for Saquon Barkley. And DJ Moore, like I said, going up against Jacksonville, who's a terrible defense, that's tough as well. So there's going to be a tough, some tough lineup decisions for Ian because Garrett Wilson just had a really good game. He's playing against Buffalo. He's got DJ Moore on his bench, Amon Ross St. Brown, Saquon, Jaden Reed, and Mike Evans. So I'm hoping that he makes the wrong choices of who he <laughs> plays for wide receiver because I'm scared of all those options. Yeah. 
me. I'm hoping, like I said, to get Malik Neighbors back. David Njoku is already dead to me after one week. <laughs> um, I don't know why I picked up a guy that's getting passes thrown to him from Deshaun Watson. I should have just thought logically, but I didn't. And Brian Thomas Jr. getting the start for me because Devontae Adams, I'm assuming, is going to be out once again. And then Devontae Smith coming back, hopefully healthy. And then hopefully Bijan gets has a get-right game against Carolina and Jameer Gibbs is able to do something against Dallas this week. So should be a close matchup, I, w- I would assume, because Ian has a lot of points on his bench. So I'm sure the, the final tally will be a lot closer yeah. um, projection-wise. Next up, Sammy has the next highest scoring matchup He's at the moment. He's favored to win. I think he's been favored to win a couple of times, <laughs> unfortunately. He's predicted, predicted to have 128 points. Unfortunately, this does not help either team really in the standings. You would want Sammy or Becky to be playing one of those teams that is ahead of them in the standings to knock one of them down a peg. So for them to both play each other, whoever loses this matchup could be in a lot of trouble, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's starting to look dire for both of them. Uh, Becky, I, I talked to her today. I, we're thinking about playing Jalen Hurts because I also have Jalen Hurts in another league. So it's one of those things where Jalen Hurts might get the start this week because his team is going to be fully healthy. So mm. Philly might be running on all cylinders. So she's going to give Jalen Hurts the start this week and decide moving forward if Jalen Hurts struggles once again that Jordan Love might be her quarterback for the future. But I will say that, uh, well, yeah, Love's not a, a bad backup to plug in there, but I would say, and this is me, that we just talked about the waiver wire. There are several waiver wire quarterbacks I would start ahead of Hertz right now. Yeah. Um, and I don't fully blame you. I Like I said, I just think this would be kind of the final week to be like, Philadelphia has all their weapons. This should be them at full strength. Let's see what Jalen Hurts can do coming off the bye week, hopefully getting things right. And maybe he turns back into that league winner we we thought he could be. And Sammy, he's going to benefit, unfortunately, getting A.J. Brown back. So there's a, a little bit of a neutralization there with A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts. But as we know, Jalen Hurts is known to get a rushing touchdown or two every once in a while. So if he gets those and A.J. Brown stays out of the end zone, then Becky will you know, prevail in that mm. little matchup there. Um. Let me ask you this, uh, going back to Becky's team, how, how confident would you be starting the Dallas defense against the lions? So that's another thing Becky and I talked about. Uh, yeah. she is probably going to drop Ezekiel Elliott. That's what we were talking about today because she still thinks that Dallas's defense has potential, but it's one of those things that she does not want to have to start Dallas against Detroit. Yeah. One, you don't want to root against Detroit and, right. and Goff was, was perfect. Uh, Two weeks ago, right? Uh, I wouldn't be comfortable starting any defense against yeah. the Lions right now. And Dallas's defense just hasn't been as good this year. And she does have Brandon Aubrey, but she can root for the kicker because if they're kicking, they're most likely not scoring. Yeah, so exactly. That's that's an okay thing. So she's probably going to pick up a defense, probably drop Ezekiel Elliott because she does want to keep the upside of Dallas's defense because we've seen them, you know, put up points. Oh in the yeah, past. I would start them against other teams. Right. Sure. So she'll probably hold two defenses for a little bit. Um, figure things out, but yeah, she, she's going to pick somebody up. I don't, I don't know exactly who, but we kind of talked about it this morning. Um, as far as other options, I don't think she's, I think her lineup is pretty much set for the most part yeah. of who she's going to go with. And I would assume Sammy already made all his changes. So that's probably going to be his final roster, depending on, um, I guess, Jonathan Taylor's status going forward. But I gotta say, Becky's team looks really good on paper, yep. man. It's just bad luck, I guess. Yeah, both both teams, honestly, even you know, as much as I dog Sammy for not really having a, a wide receiver room, now that he gets AJ Brown back, his team looks good on paper every, almost every week. But he also just has struggled from not having good luck. Yeah. So two of these teams, or both of these teams, needing to get back on schedule and quickly. It's unfortunate, like I said, that they have to play each other this week. Um, the next highest matchup at the moment by barely anything is Marie taking on Tracy and both these teams have been two of the hotter teams in the league at the moment, um, outside of Ian's team, I guess 
but it looks like Marie making the wise choice because of Patrick Mahomes. She is going with Jared Goff to start him, which is going to be fun because we know that, again, Detroit really wants revenge on Dallas. So she's going to be able to replace Patrick Mahomes. And, you know, if Goff plays good, maybe maybe she looks at playing Goff Permanent going forward. Switch. We'll see. But um, she does need some production out of C.D. Lamb and D.K. Metcalf. They have struggled um, a little bit recently. And Derrick Henry should be no problem against Washington. Washington's been impressive, but their defense has not been. DeAndre Swift, like I said, he might be a, have another good matchup. She is going to have to find a tight end. I don't know if she has a backup. I didn't look yet. Um, she does have Mike Gesicki, so maybe she goes with Mike Gesicki against the Giants. Um, or maybe she looks at the waiver wire. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Haven't really talked to her about her fantasy teams lately, honestly. And um, was uh, wasn't it CD Lamb who uh, got caught on the sidelines, kind of uh, berating his quarterback? Yeah, there was a little bit of a people were trying to read his lips. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of a, a thing there. Yeah, but I, I'm not so sure it was all that big of a deal. But uh, maybe mm. uh, she does have, I would say, the number one defense this week. Pittsburgh going up against Las Vegas, Ugh. so she could get a lot of points out of her defense, which might be the difference in this matchup. Again, Young Way Koo could have a big game as well. But Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, once again, are on the docket, and they're up against the Giants, who, you know, I have to give it to them. They played good defense last week, so maybe maybe they bring more pressure again and cause Joe Burrow to struggle a little bit. But yeah. it's always scary playing up against uh, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Plus, that's a Sunday night game, so Marie will be finished for the day. And so she'll know that what her total is, and she has to watch Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow Sunday night, mm. slowly clawing back at that deficit oh. if there is. Uh, it looks like Tracy still needs to replace Justin Jefferson, so she'll probably go ahead in the projected matchup. Although I guess Travis Kelsey is still, but um, so has to replace Justin Jefferson, so Marie gets a little bit of a sigh of, sigh of relief not having to go against Jefferson and Chase. And Zay Flowers never know what kind of game script Baltimore is going to be in. So that's kind of a wait and see. But once again, this should be a good matchup. Chris Olave and Alvin Kamara for New Orleans, they're going to be in a divisional matchup against Tampa Bay. However, Chris Olave might be without Derek Carr. So that's a little bit scary. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Saints have been uh, putting up some points, but even though you never know who's going to be the hero from week to week, um, Alave, he didn't do much of anything no. uh, last night, did he? Yeah. And um, so you never know what you're going to get. But without Carr in there, the, the backup that came in uh, last night didn't look very solid to me. Right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, we'll see if uh, the Saints can uh, continue what they've been doing with a backup quarterback. Right. And then Tracy's going to have to make a decision of who to replace Justin Jefferson with. Like you said, Brian Robinson's been playing really good, won a part yeah. of that Washington offense. Uh, but she does have Chase Brown, who's been playing pretty good for Cincinnati lately. Joe Mixon, it doesn't sound like he's going to be back from what I've heard. Wow. But there is a chance. Uh, the latest update they just happened today. They said the Texans just don't know when he'll be able to return. Mm. Uh, so that's one to watch out for and going through the week. Um, but yeah, both teams having to make a decision on two positions. And finally we have Joe going up against Malik. And, um, this is another close matchup at the moment. I don't know if you set your lineup just yet or not. I did make some changes. The only question mark is my kicker. I'm going to have to pick up a kicker on the waiver wire because mm. it doesn't look like Moody's going to play. Yeah. Uh, everything else I think is locked in. I don't think I have any waiver wire uh, requests other than my kicker. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to be my lineup. Uh, is uh, Malik's? Looks like Malik's is. Malik also needs a kicker. And then. Ah, uh, yeah. Tyreek Hill is going to be on a bye, but he hasn't been all that good lately, so that might not be that bad of a yeah. thing. Puka Nakua is still out, so kind of a makeshift team at the moment. We'll see about Nico Collins. That could be a big one. Same with Travis Etienne. If Travis Etienne is a little bit banged up and they give more touches to Tank Bigsby, might be something to think about for Malik. Mm. Um, so, you know, you, you might get lucky again with injuries and bye weeks and... Maybe Malik will just have the highest scoring team this week. 
<laughs> I know, man. I, you know, I don't want to jinx myself. I'm seeing all these, you know, red, uh, questionable, uh, statuses and bye weeks and stuff. And uh, part of me is confident that I should yeah. get the win this week, but uh, I thought the same thing last week. So How do you feel? Goes? I, I kind of wasn't paying attention, but did you talk about Bucky Irving at all? Like why you chose Bucky Irving over Ford or Dobbins? Well, Ford has been very frustrating in that offense. Right. I'm just about ready to give up on Ford. Um, plus, uh, Chubb, you know, I don't know how many weeks Chubb is, mm -hmm. uh, away from coming back, but once, once Chubb comes back, Ford's almost droppable. Um, and, uh, I, I thought Bunky Irving, I mean, the, the, the Tampa Bay offense has been rolling for the most part. Right. And Bucky Irving, you know, has been splitting car uh, carries with White, and he's been doing the most with his opportunities over White. And so I thought this past weekend was going to be the week that Bucky Irving takes over that backfield. That was not the case. White, uh, again, maybe he was motivated by the threat of losing touches to uh, to Bucky Irving, but I thought Irving was going to be the guy. I th and and yeah. I don't know, he may still take over that backfield that, at some point, but right now white's the guy. So, so we'll see. Um, right now he's in, uh, I may leave him in, uh, who is, I'm kind of done with Ford. Dobbins is playing Dobbins, against Denver. That's, yeah. that's kind of the hard part is the, yeah. the matchup might be tough. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave Irving in and, uh, see how he does. Um, and uh, at some point we'll see if he takes over that backfield, but he, you know, watching him play on on red zone he's looking pretty good out there mm -hmm. he's he's getting the hard hard you know five six seven yard carries pretty consistently so right so we'll see how that plays out but yeah looking at the standings real quick like i said it's crazy bunched up in the middle everybody's three and two for the most part uh becky and sammy really needing a win and it's un again unfortunate they have to play each other this week joe sitting still at the top with a four and one record, but Tracy's starting to pull away in points. Boy, seven thirty three. So she's been kind of a tough team to face every week because it's very volatile the scoring that she's had. But um, as usual, make sure to hit those waiver wires. Worry about the bye weeks, and again, if anybody's getting concerned about their team, throw some trades off, trades out there, and uh, yeah, good luck to everybody, and um, Sammy and Becky especially. I know you guys are playing each other, but we're going to watch closely on that matchup because it's it could be the most important matchup of the year because to go potentially 0-6 for Sammy, that's almost the halfway point before the playoffs. Yeah. It starts to get really scary. Yeah, you'd have to go on a, a win streak, which would yeah. be near impossible. So, And again, just as a reminder, you know, six of the eight teams in our league are going to advance to the playoffs, so... This is a race to not be one of those bottom two teams. Yep. So good luck in week six to everyone. Make those moves that you need to make. And uh, we'll see you after week six going into week seven. And the season just keeps rolling right along. Yeah.